Ladies and gentlemen, are there plans to replace Professor Kituri Kindiki with Eden Dwale at the Ministry of Interior? That is the question which most Kenyans are currently asking. And for those who have been following this channel for a long time, I have always opined that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. And that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happens for the sake of it. Earlier this week, a video clip of uh, Professor Kithure Kendiki emerged online. And in that video clip, Professor Kithure Kendiki is captured warning the police against harassing demonstrators. In fact, in his own words, listen him to Professor Kithure Kendiki. Kama wanainchi awana silaha wachani na wananchi wa sebe mambo yao kama hawajabeba silaha hawaumizi mtu hawavunji duka ya mtu wacha waongee mambo yao ikifika jioni wataenda nyumbani ikiwezekana uwasindikishwe yeah yes sababu kuna wenzetu katika idara ya usalama wachache pia ambao wanatumia nguvu visivyo na hiyo haitakubalika Haitakubalika. That clip created a lot of excitement amongst Azimio supporters. And that video actually trended. And then a day later, none other than the deputy president, Rigadi Gashagwa, talked about that particular clip. And I was wondering, why would Rigadi Gashagwa, of all the people who is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, talk about an old clip, if indeed... That clip was old. And what was the objective in the first place of sharing that old clip? Listen in to Rigadi Gashagwa. Na tungetaka kuhakikishia officers wetu wa polisi. Na tungetaka kuambia hii watu ya mtadao wawache kueneza uvumi. Juzi wa metafuta clip ya zamani ya waziri wetu wa usalama akiongea huko Isibania. Akiongelelea jambo ilikuwa huko ya polisi kutumia nguvu mambo kidogo wanajaribu kupidua hiyo video ati inamaanisha ati waziri wetu wa usalama anasema polisi wasikabiliana na hii watu ya maandamano ningetaka kuambia hiyo ni porojo our minister of interior is focused and our police officers should apply the law and apprehend offenders irrespective of their status in society wewe ukienda kutoa fujo kesho utakamatwa so why do you think Rigadi Gashagwa was trying to talk about that particular clip? Of course, because the perception which was created was that Professor Kituri Kindiki was telling the police not to deal ruthlessly with the demonstrators, something which Rigadi Gashagwa did not agree with. But something also happened. After Rigadi Gashagwa made that comment, the next day, Professor Kithuri Kendiki also came out and he spoke very strongly and issued a stern warning to Azimio demonstrators ahead of the Wednesday demonstrations. Wengine wanasema katiba inasema kuna uhuru ya kuandamana ni kweli. Lakini wenye wanaongea mambo ya katiba hawaielewi. Mimi naelewa hiyo katiba kuliko hao waungwana. Wa Nataka ni wahakikishie. Hatuta kubali tena katika mchanga wa Kenya. Maandamano ya kuvuruga watu, kuwa watu na kuharibu biashara za watu. We will not allow. We will not allow. Mesikia kuna watu wamesema story nyingi kule. Sijui vile watafanya juma tano. Mukuja asubuhi tukutane. Those extreme ideas that when you disagree on a political issue, you cause mayhem, you hurt people, you close businesses, you close public highways, you uproot, you know, facilities. That culture must stop. And we are going to deal with you very firmly, decisively, and with finality. Again, the question you should ask yourself, why do you think Professor Kituri Kindiki came out, probably was under pressure, 
to come out and address the issue of the demonstrators. But are there plans to replace Professor Kithure Kindiki? And that's why I began by giving you that history. Now let me take you to the meat of this story. And just like I've been telling you, in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence. I was, I was watching a video clip of uh, a gentleman, one of the analysts, David Wafula. I normally watch his clips a lot because I know how Kenya operates. In this country, we had two analysts who are working very closely with the Itumbi team. One of them was called Gerald Bitok, who was running the tackle, and then David Wafula. So Bitok finally ended up at State House. But I was watching a clip of uh, David Wafula. In that clip, David Wafula is suggesting that there is panic in Azimio because there is plans to bring Aden Duale into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and then transfer Professor Kithuri Kindiki to the Ministry of uh, Defense, where Duale is. And I was like, okay, that is the thinking of the deep state. Someone wanted that information to come out, which means someone somewhere is actually advocating for Professor Kithure Kindiki to be moved. Let me just play for you this clip very shortly of David Wafula. Very briefly before we proceed. The thing that bothers me the most is the fact that every time Raila calls for Mandamano, we will see the president saying, I will not allow Sitawarusu. After that, we will see the deputy president also issuing threats towards Azimio. We will also hear Kithure Kindiki saying something about the Mandamano that we will not allow. After all that, we still see the same Mandamano, if not worse. What is the purpose of these threats? Nothing is being done. Even Dennis Itumbi is always coming out with HNIB reports and basically giving the government leakage that, look, this is what the opposition is doing, and it's very credible information. But what is done about it? Little to nothing. In fact, there's a HNIB report which came out yesterday. I just decided I'm not going to touch on that one, because what's the point? What's the point of always knowing what your enemies are going to do, but you never do anything about it? None of them are arrested, none of them are summoned, nothing happens. They're just free, they're roaming the country, doing their daily chaos and whatnot. So the question is, who is to blame? Someone has to be held accountable. Is it the president? Is it the deputy president? Is it Kindiki or is it Koome. For me, the man who has this burden on his shoulders is Professor Kithure Kindiki because he is the CS of Interior. The truth of the matter is that the position of CS of Interior is the second most powerful amongst the CSs, second only to the Prime Cabinet Secretary, of course, which is a position that was added just the other day. Without that position, Kithure Kindiki would have been number three in power. Okay, we know it's the Speaker, but in reality, when we talk about actual physical power, Kithure Kindiki would have been wielding it, the same way Matiangi was wielding that kind of power in the past. And Kindiki was given this position mainly because he was supposed to be President William Ruto's deputy. It was either him or Rigadi Gashagwa. And Rigadi Gashagwa being the kind of tough politician he is, he beat Kithure Kindiki to the position. So they had to reward Kithure Kindiki with something meaningful. So they gave him the CS of interior position. And in my opinion, if this government wants to end this issue of Maandamano, they need to reshuffle this cabinet. Personally, I would rather see Aden Duale moved from defense to interior and Kithure Kindiki from interior to defense. You cannot tell me we will see this Mandamano day in, day out with Aden Duale as the CS of Interior. If things do not change, then Aden Duale needs to immediately be moved to Interior. We need somebody who will not play any games whatsoever with people who are intentionally sabotaging the economy. And that is how life is. <laughs> now, that's a well-packaged message from David Wafula. But another member of parliament from the mountain, also made a similar suggestions that Professor Kithuri Kindiki should actually be moved from... Kwa nini machu kwa mda mrefu kumshika kinara upinzani? Nikweli, nime jamu nzuri ilo. Mimi nimesema kwamba mapendekezo yangu kwa rais. Na mimi, hapa kidogo, nina hitilafu na nina hitilafiana na waziri wa mambo ya andani. Eh, Professor Kithuri Kindiki. Mimi nadhani amezembea kazini. Mimi nadhani ni mtamuomba rais 
achunguze kama kweli yeye anafaa kuwa pale ama amfute kazi kwa sababu ni kama ameshindwa kazi kazi ndogo tu ya... so in this video i want us to look at why there are those calls to replace professor kituri kindiki with eden dwale before you do that for those who are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and to the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support this channel cannot be where it is and without any further ado let us dive in and by the way allow me to thank the following people you are seeing their names there for the coffee i'm very grateful you can also do the same you seeing the numbers you are seeing on your screen you know today is friday yeah today is friday we, we need to be somewhere <laughs> now let us get to the main issue are there plans to replace professor kituri kindiki the first question is how did professor kituri kindiki end up the minister for interior initially majority of leaders from the mountain had actually wanted professor kituri kindiki to be william ruto's running mate but because of regadi gashagwa's nature of politics his deep pocket he was able to corner ruto and ruto made him the running mate professor kituri kindiki at that time promised kenyans that he was not going to to take up any government job but when william ruto formed his cabinet the name which came the first on top of cabinet secretaries was that of professor kituri kindiki which means in my view that position was well earned Professor Kituri Kindiki was loyal to Ruto. He's sober. I mean, he's one of the guys even if Raila Odinga were to be the president of the Republic of Kenya, I don't think I would have a problem with Professor Kituri Kindiki serving in the same ministry. He's a good guy, a gentleman, a performer. But why would someone suggest that Dwale should take over his role? You can go to Eden Dwale's uh, Twitter then you'll understand why these guys are talking of Aden Dwale. Aden Dwale is playing more of politics is forgotten that he's now a cabinet secretary. But why are there calls to replace Professor Kituri Kindiki? Number 1, within Kenya Kwanza, there is a very strong feeling. And just like I've always told you, there's a very strong feeling that Professor Kituri Kindiki has failed to arrest Raila Odinga. You know the other day I was explaining to you guys that in Kenya Kwanza there are, th there are two camps but someone added their third camp the first camp in Kenya Kwanza is the moderate which is led by people like professor Keturi Kindiki and then there is the radicals the group which is coalescing around the deputy president Rigadi Gashagwa this is the group which believes that Raila Odinga should be arrested let a few people here and there people make noise one two days then things will be normalized or they are the same same group who are advocating for the elimination of Raila Odinga that you eliminate Raila Odinga the country will be at a standstill for like one or two months then from there things will normalize and people will forget about Raila Odinga and then there's a third group which is now referred to as the confused group according to that gentleman and that group is where Prof uh, where Mundavadi is they don't know what's really happening so the, the the group which is the radical group has been advocating for the arrest of Raila Odinga But I think Professor Kituri Kindiki being an advocate, a professor of law who also understands certain things and be, ha, having been part of the Sabasaba, you know, if you look at Roto, Rigadi and the rest, they don't even understand what Sabasaba is. But for Professor Kituri Kindiki, he understands what Sabasaba is because he was part of it at some point. So is unable to arrest Raila. This guy is telling him arrest Raila Odinga. So these guys believe that if Eden Dwale were to be placed there, then he can easily arrest Raila Amolo Odinga. So that's number one. Number two, there is also a difference in opinion on how Azimio demonstra demonstrations can actually be handled. That is the fact. There are those in Kenya Kwanza who believe that this guy should just be let to go to the street, do their thing and go home. And there are those who believe that we are in government but we can negotiate with these guys. But there are those who just believe that these guys should be crushed. So the camp which want Professor Kituri Kindiki out believes very strongly that the strategy which is being used currently is not favoring 
them. It's only favoring Rani Odinga. And therefore, they needed to change a strategy. And that change of strategy would mean people like uh, Professor Kithure Kindiki being uh, kicked out or replaced. And number three, it's something to do with Kenya Kwanza factional politics. You know, the truth of the matter is that if you look at Kenya Kwanza, there are factions. Factions have emerged. There's the moderate, and there are those of um, <coughs> radicals. And radicals are the majority. The only problem they have is that they were able to radicalize their supporters using lies. Now, those lies are now with their supporters. In fact, I was watching a clip today of um, a video of someone playing William Ruto's lies in a funeral or in some event in the mountain. And for me, that's something which should worry William Ruto. So because there are those factional politics, each faction wants to take control of a uh, key ministry. Ministry of Interior is one of the most powerful. So you, 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 you just don't assume that Rigadi Gashaga would not want to take control of that, of that locket. And lastly, I think it has to do with 2032 politics. Will Rigadi Gashagwa be on the ballot? Why do you think Rigadi Gashagwa is not harsh on demonstrators? Because he's seeing some loop, loopholes somewhere. And he's taking advantage of them. The loophole is that Rigadi Gashagwa is coming as a radical. And there's no way he can win the support of Azimio supporters. Because the truth is, Rayla Udinga, William Ruto will exit political scene soon. So which means Rigadi Kindiki will be there and they'll, they'll need to win the support of Azimio supporters. If you are responsible of their miming, what tells you that they can support you? And that's the, the, the trap Rigadi Gashagwa is avoiding. And for uh, and that's the trap Professor Kituri Kindiki is trying to avoid. But for Rigadi Gashagwa, for him, as long as he can win the support of the mountain, he's safe. And that's why we are witnessing this. But it's just a matter of time. Unless William Ruto will defend Professor Kituri Kindiki, I want to believe that there are plans to actually push him out. Until next time, this is Lee Makunyu. Let me know if you've enjoyed this particular video. Bye-bye.